Hello everyone, thanks for joining this session on how to use Kinetico to analyze billions of entities in real time. Uh, my name is Matt and I will be your presenter today. So let's begin the session on how to analyze billions of entities in real time. I have a few slides to introduce Kinetico before we jump into our demonstration. Um, and just to set the scene for us. Um, so with the proliferation of location aware devices, geospatial analytics has never been so important. It's now the norm for devices to be geospatially aware and for software to store and continuously log that information. And with that data comes new use cases and new monetization opportunities and new regulatory requirements, all which invariably come across our desks as geospatial engineers or architects. At Kinetica, we are at the forefront of working on cutting edge geospatial real-time and entity tracking use cases with our partners and customers which include the United States Postal Service and the US government. Where we have seen previous generations of tools fall short is around the lack of specialized geospatial functions and capabilities, around the inability to scale and support huge data sets, the inability to perform on continuously streaming data that's flowing into the system or where client side visualization tools can't provide the interactivity on multi-rillion row data sets that users want to experience. Kinetica provides a feature-rich geospatial platform that can plug into your existing geospatial infrastructure, such as Esri, or your existing BI tools like Tableau and Power BI, and enables use cases faster, more performant, more resilient, and at a scale you've hopefully never seen before. So about the demonstration today, we will focus around vessel traffic data or AIS data as it's known. We collect this data using our native Kafka connector and this streams into our Kinetica cloud deployment on EC2. All of the geospatial and analytic functions you see executed are part of an out of the box Kinetica installation. So as part of this demo, um, we will first use Reveal, which is Kinetica's bundled geospatial dashboarding tool to visualize and understand what the AIS data is and the data points that it offers. We will introduce the concept of a port manager, um, somebody who's looking after vessels within their particular region or port, and he will have some use cases that we will, will want to solve. And these will be around proximity de detection when vessels get too close to each other, identifying vessels which are dwelling in his port waters for too long, and also enabling some real-time geofencing to detect when new ships are entering waters that he is uh, responsible for. After we've done that, we will build an alerting pipeline, which will output this data as it happens in real time to a custom dashboard. So without further ado, let's jump into it. So I'm going to switch over here to reveal, and this is our um, geospatial enabled BI tool or dashboarding tool uh, that comes as part of Kinetica. And we're going to use this to understand um, the AIS data that we have available to us. Um, first thing to notice here is that we have 1.3 billion rows that we have on this dashboard. And we aren't asking you to look at any data which has been pre-aggregated or um, pre-rendered. Everything here that you're seeing on the screen is rendered on the fly and we still have access to all of the line item data that you can see here at the foot of the screen. Um, and AIS data basically contains a unique identifier called an MMSI, which identifies a vessel. It contains an X and a Y, a latitude and longitude hi, location. I'm so Hello. sorry to, hi Matt, I'm so sorry to intervene here. Uh, could you please share the screen again? I, I think we are unable to see your screen. Okay, I can do that. Thank you. So hopefully you can see my screen now. Um, when I was talking through, can you see it? Yes, Matt, absolutely. Thank you so much. Okay, great, thank you. Um, thank you. So this is Reveal. Um, I'll just backtrack a little bit, uh, which is the geospatial dashboarding tool that comes as part of Connecticut. Uh, here we have 1.3 billion rows, which we've rendered both visually here uh, with a chloropleth um, showing 
different colors for different speeds of vehicles. And here on the right, we have a heat map, which is showing the density of traffic for the vessel information that we're capturing. We're essentially capturing an MMSI, which is a unique identifier for a vessel, as well as a latitude and longitude, um, and a timestamp that goes along with that information as well. We also have some extra metadata information, such as the vessel type, the country of origin, and things like whether the vessel's underway or whether it's moored. Now, everything here on this dashboard is operating on a line item level. So I can browse around and identify areas which are obviously high in concentration of uh, vessels, which we can see here represented by the, um, the brighter colored areas here, which we'd expect around a popular port region uh, in the Netherlands. Um, I can also interact with this data set as well. So I'll just give this dashboard a quick refresh. Okay, so we'll move on and come back to this uh, towards the end of the demonstration. Um, and I will move on now to introducing the um, use case around the port manager. And we're going to play the role in this demonstration around a port operations manager. And this port operations manager is operating in the Gulf of Mexico near Houston. And he wants to get the following real time information around his uh, waters that he's responsible for. So he wants to be alerted when a ship enters his administrative boundary, what we commonly call geofencing. So we'll look at drawing a shape and um, triggering a real time alert when a uh, ship enters his um, geospatial boundary that he's concerned with. Um, we also want to identify ships that are dwelling and loitering so that have entered his waters but are not actively moving and we also want to know vessels which are not perhaps behaving as we want them to within our waters so identifying ships which are passing too close to other ships something that we call proximity alerts so let's move on to data collection so We've, we started to look at uh, some of the AIS information that we've got, and we're going to use a table here that we have with the AIS position data in there. And if I run this query, we should see that we have around uh, half a billion records in this AIS position table. And just to show you what that data looks like, again, we can see that we've got latitude, longitude, a unique identifier in the MMSI, as well as a timestamp. And we have some other information to support this, like continent and country that the, um, that the vessel has come from. So we can actually run a quick geospatial function here to define the area of interest for the AIS data. We'll draw a quick shape, which we can display here within the workbook, which will show us the area around the Gulf of Mexico that we're interested in. And then one other thing that we want to do here is use a unique function of Connecticut called an as of join. And this is going to let us join that AIS tracking information. So the X and the Ys, the latitudes and the longitudes to some extra metadata that we're also collecting. Um, and I'm first just going to extract the points. So we can see that I'm using my STXY contains with the make envelope function that I passed above. And I'm also inserting this as of join. And what this as of join essentially allows me to do is a join two entities together, which are on a different timeline. So joining together the location information, but also joining that with extra metadata information, which is emitted on a different timeline. So I can say here with this as of join, let me combine two, two separate um, streams of data together on slightly different timelines and get me the closest element to the originating timeline. And I'm going to bring in some navigation status information from this AIS information rather than the positional information. And I'll create this table that I can now um, start to analyze. And as you can see, we've got some ship type data and we've slightly changed the uh, schema of this data set. Now, here within the workbook, we can do some basic analytics like extracting all of the countries. And we can see, as we'd expect in this area, the majority of the vessels coming from the USA, 
Um, we can remove them from that query and get a cleaner visualization showing us where most of the vessels are coming from from other areas. Um, and we could look at the bottom of the group as well and produce the data, which is um, which are the least popular vessels currently entering our waters. And of course, we can plot this information geospatially. Here, we're just doing a simple feature render inside the workbook, which we can zoom into and view the individual uh, shipping lanes and see where um, traffic is, is moving through our waters. And we can expand this and you've always got access to line item data within this as well. So if I want to click on an individual point, I can pull up an individual ship, get its ID, its country of origin, et cetera, et cetera. And we can, of course, support different visualization types with, uh, well, this is rendering features. We're rendering a heat map um, below it here, showing areas of concentration. So let's move on to talking about tracks. So firstly, what are tracks? So a track is a native geospatial object inside Connecticut which this visualization here at the bottom in a short animation goes a long way to showing you what it looks like. And it's designed to represent the path an object takes over, over time and space. To define a track, you need a unique identifier, an ID or an MMSI in our case, as well as a latitude and a longitude and a timestamp. Tracks also come with their own computational functions, allowing you to do things like um, interception calculations, proximity detections, which we'll use as part of this use case. So I'm going to extract a particular ID or MMSI or track ID from the tracks table I created in the previous workbook. We're going to have 5,000 points as part of this. If I just create this table and insert the records into it for that particular track, we'll now see that we've just got one MMSI in this table, um, which is from Marshall um, and is a tanker. Now, with tracks, the way that we can represent this is, <clears throat> and the way it will look like on a map, is something like this for an individual track. So if I want to zoom in and just take a look here, we can see that Connecticut has filled in the blanks between each point in the track. So where the green dots occur, that's where we actually got a ping or a latitude or a longitude response. The blue line represents us joining those points together. And if I zoom back out slightly and just come over here towards where the ship was last recorded having a point, we can see the big pink dot, which represents the last location that we received for this particular track. And again, you can click into all of the individual elements and you have access to all of the line item data within uh, this visualization. And of course, we can um, also have access to, at this point, different track specific functions. So things like calculating the length of a track, which we can do here with this particular function, which is going to calculate the meters traveled for that particular vessel. Um, you can also, we can also use things like ST track duration, which is going to say, how long did it take for that particular vessel to traverse that track? And we can run a larger function as well to calculate that duration, that distance, to calculate the speed, and to calculate that for every single track or every single MMSI or every single vessel that's currently active in our waters. And we've done that pretty Hi, quickly Matt. as well to get you. Yeah. Hi, Matt. Sorry to Hello. cut in. Uh, will it be possible to zoom in a little bit so that, uh, you know, it could be much more readable? Sure. Is it possible? I, I think I can do this. Is that better? Uh, maybe, yes. Yes, go ahead. Thank you. No problem. Um. So yeah, the, here we've done a larger calculation uh, across the whole data set um, where we've used some track specific functions to calculate the um, full duration for a particular uh, vessel's journey, the distance that a particular vessel is covered and the speed in which um, that vessel covered that journey. And you can see here the results table. And we can obviously plot 
all of the tracks for every single vessel and render those here in the workbook very quickly. Um, and this visualization is computed server side and passed back to the browser. So there's very little impact on the client itself. And again, if I zoom into various areas, hopefully my screen zoom in doesn't mess this up. I don't think it does. Um, we can start to see the shipping lanes and the tracks um, of the individual vessels that have left this particular port and actually map out the routes that each of these vessels have taken. So moving on to a data pipeline. So we're going to calculate when ships enter our port waters. We're going to calculate dwell times and we're going to calculate when ships are passing too close to other ships. Um, and the way that we're going to create some real-time alerts around this is to use a feature of Kinetica called data syncs. So a data sync essentially allows Kinetica to write out the result of a particular analytic to either a webhook or a Kafka topic. So here I'm going to create some credentials for my Kafka, um, Kafka deployment, and I'm going to create the data sync called shipping alerts, which will be translated into a topic where I'm going to put all of the alerts that I generate. So let's go on to the first thing that we're going to look at, which is geofencing. So geofencing, we're going to construct a boundary and we're going to detect when a particular ship or vessel enters that boundary and send an alert. So to do that, we're going to use estimate triangle 2D, which is a geospatial function that we support to plot out the area that our ship manager wants to be alerted to. We're then going to use um, that function and we're going to run it against incoming data. We've just got a simple query here, which is showing all of the vessels that are foul within our, um, our boundary using an, an STXY contains function. But what we're going to do here is actually set up a stream. So a stream is going to constantly loop. So you see the refresh on change um, element here. So when this table, the AIS tracks table, receives new data, we're going to see if that data lines up within that triangular boundary that we, um, we just drew. And if it does, we're going to drop that alert into our shipping alerts data sync, which will go out to our Kafka topic. So I'm going to create that right now. Next, we're going to look at dwell times. What we want to do here is essentially identify when a ship has stopped and is loitering in our waters. To do this, we are going to use a stored procedure, which is just another function with inside Kinetica for us to store SQL and execute that on a regular basis. And we're doing a, a pretty basic dwell calculation here. We're using a window function to get the previous location of the ship and the previous timestamp of the ship. We're then going to calculate the dwell time as a timestamp difference between the current location and the previous location. And we're going to calculate the distance between the previous latitude and longitude and the current latitude and longitude in meters. So I'm going to run this. And this is now going to execute every five seconds for the previous five seconds worth of data. And then again, we can use a stream function to refresh on change every time the stored procedure outputs new data to the dwell location table, we'll look for any vessel which has been dwelling for longer than zero minutes, we're very strict in our port, and has covered less than five kilometers. And we will drop that into our data sync as well. And next, we will look at proximity alerts. So this is going to use a very track specific function and it's going to allow us to detect when two vessels have passed close within each other. And the way that we will do this is we'll set up a table to store those proximity events. We will uh, then create a materialized view, which will refresh every five seconds and store the data from our location information. And then we will use our strtrack function, strtrack d within function. And to this function, what I will pass is the recent payload of uh, vessel locations that we've received. We will pass all of the rest of the vessel locations. 
and we're passing some parameters here. So we're saying search within two kilometers and search within 10 minutes of a proximity event. So any entity which passes within two kilometers within 10 minutes of another vessel, we want to write that out to a, um, out to, we, we want to detect that event essentially and insert it into our proximity events table. So we'll go ahead and do that now. And then again, we're going to use that stream functionality again to detect when we get new records into that vessel, uh, vessel tracking proximity events table. And every time it changes, we need to write those out to the shipping alerts table as well. So super simple to be able to build these pipelines here in the workbook inside Connecticut. And I'm now going to just simulate some data writing into the um, writing into the uh, writing into the database. And I've got a really simple real-time dashboard here, just written in React, which is connecting to Kafka, which will hopefully start to populate with data once we just kick off a little ingest here. So all of those functions are now working behind the scenes inside Connecticut. And you can see that we're already starting to detect some proximity events. These passing close means that we're this vessel, this unique vessel is passing close to other vessels. We've got vessels that we have identified which are dwelling in place, and we're putting out alerts for them as well. And as you can see now, we're also detecting vessels which are entering our port waters. And we're just passing through some arbitrary information here, like where that vessel has come from, which is the uh, USA. And so we've got a couple from the USA, we've got one from Singapore. And we have some real-time geospatial events being calculated triggering alerts and it was all very simple to set up in the workbook very simple to build those robust pipelines and have this as a repeatable workflow um we have a five minutes left so i hope i have time to go back to here and this is uh come back to life now to just be able to show you um reveal and what our dashboarding tool can actually do um, when it's working on these 1.3, with these large multi-billion row data sets. So I think we've got a little bit of activity. So I'll go through this really quickly before we wrap up the presentation and go over to questions. Um, so on the left, um, we are uh, displaying a chloropleth, which is essentially classifying each vehicle based on its um, speed. Um, so we can see some of these darker, some of these more colorful areas, which are representing vessels which are traveling more quickly. And on the right hand side, we have a heat map which is representing um, like, um, congestion or the number of events. And obviously, we'd expect to see around ports those kind of events. And we can use this to zoom in on a particular location, identify potential um, anomalies in the data very easily. So, an analyst would be very comfortable using this tool to say, okay, there's a high concentration of vessels in this location which vessels are these i can always get down to the line item data pull out that this is a ship from japan i can get all the accompanying information that we've got and you can use this dashboard to slice and dice based on date we're going to update filter this data set down from a billion to 300 million pretty quickly and everything on this dashboard is interactive so if i just wanted to pull out vessels with an engine underway i can absolutely do that kinetic will refresh and show you that data so that you can continue to explore and hone in on those specific events that you're looking for. Okay, I'm glad we got time to demonstrate that. I will go back here now. I've just got one more slide and then we will hand over for questions. So um, to try Kinetica out, um, the work from this webinar and all the accompanying code will be available to download uh, shortly after this presentation finishes. You can also download Kinetica Developer Edition for free um, and give it a try either on Windows or Mac or Linux. And we have plenty of examples out there of other geospatial functions and streaming functions um, on our GitHub pages. And Kinetica has a fully managed cloud edition which runs in AWS or Azure and starts at $1.50 per hour, allowing you to try it out and scale as you find use cases to run with us. Thank you very much for your time. So we have a question here saying, um, 
does Connecticut have movement data for smartphones? We, I will, um, we, we don't hold data ourselves. Um, we are a geospatial platform or database. Uh, we don't provide any data as part of our platform. Uh, question, do, we, do you need programming skills? So to get the most out of Connecticut, having a basic understanding of SQL will allow you to uh, access all of the functions within the platform. Uh, we have a lot of UI guided experiences for things like ingesting data and building dashboards. Um, so um, yeah, you should, you should, with a basic knowledge of SQL, you should be able to get started with Connecticut. Can I, so a question here, can I export my results, maps and graphics to my website? Uh, yes, you can. We provide ways for you to export data um, in various different ways. Uh, question, is it free for researchers and academics? Um, there is a developer edition um, that you can download from our website for free, and that can be used um, in such circumstances, yes. Uh, we have another question here. Can the shipping example map an alert when a specific entity passes or dwells close to another entity of interest? Absolutely. Um, you could, uh, one way of doing it would be to use a, a buffer function with inside Connecticut to draw uh, a buffer around that area of interest. And then you would use the same geofencing geo code that I used um, to detect when it, it, it entered that proximity location, essentially. But yes, absolutely. Uh, how can I apply this to urban traffic management? That's a great question. So. Um, Connecticut also has um, an extensive graph solving capability, which allows you to turn road networks into graphs within inside the database. So you could use that to identify hotspots, identify better routes for traffic to take during things like rush hour, and to be able to add things like dynamic road closures, et cetera, to ease traffic and congestion from certain areas. So, Highly recommend looking at our graph solving capabilities around traffic management. Is that AIS feed accessible for us to experiment with and when we download the developer edition? That's a good question. Um, and I will take that away and make sure that when we post this up, we have a suitable data set that you can pull down and use um, with, with, this, with this demonstration. Can we process satellite images? Um, Connecticut also supports um, deploying uh, machine learning models as SQL functions. Uh, that would allow you to do things like capture images from satellites or indeed any camera, and then run machine learning on those images as they arrive and interpolate results from those images. So uh, yes, I, I think if I understand the use case, yes. Um, if you're, ex another question, does exporting my results, it is exporting my results free or are fees charged? Um, if you are deployed in the cloud, you just pay the fees for extracting data from that cloud instance. Uh, Connecticut doesn't charge you to extract data. Uh, can I integrate Connecticut with ArcGIS Pro or enterprise environments? Um, yes, uh, we're fully compatible with ArcGIS um, in several different ways. You can use our WMS server to um, display WMS layers within ArcGIS. We also have a Python API that you can use directly in ArcGIS, as well as a, um, we, we also simulate PostGIS slash Postgres and allow you to connect that way as well. Uh, can you use regular expressions to specify several different geofences? Uh, yes, yes you can, that is absolutely possible. Uh, I wish to use the application for natural hazards like rock falls tra traveling across a terrain. Is it possible in near real time? Um, if you have the data for those rock falls, then um, Connecticut can absolutely process it in real time um, and either build alert buffers around things like those weather or terrain events. Um, but yeah, if you have the data, that would be possible in some cases. Uh, 
is code available to have hands-on experience? Um, we have um, several tutorials uh, on our website that you can um, download for free and use. And our developer edition comes preloaded with workbooks and various different examples, both geospatial and non-geospatial. Okay, I think that's uh, all the questions for today. Thank you very much for everybody for attending, and I hope you enjoyed the demonstration.